On May 22nd of 2020, a spike of gamma rays was recorded in NASA's Neil Garrell Swift Observatory's data, prompting astronomers at observatories in New Mexico, Hawaii, and even in low Earth orbit to point their telescopes where the event was recorded. Scientists have long hypothesized that gamma ray bursts are the result of the collision between two neutron stars. And you know what? They were right. This image, captured three days after the event by NASA's Hubble telescope, is of a super bright explosion that scientists call a kilonova, and we're going to learn all about it. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. Neutron stars are the super-dense remains of exploded stars. The current thinking is that when stars four to eight times the mass of our Sun burn through the last remnants of their nuclear fuel, they go supernova, shedding their outer layers and leaving behind a remnant of the star's core. The supernova remnant then collapses under its own gravity, fusing its protons and electrons into a bright ball of neutrons no bigger than 20 kilometers in diameter. Neutron stars may be smaller than some cities on Earth, but they can weigh as much as 1.4 times the mass of our own star. And neutron stars get stranger from here. They spin hundreds of times per second, and the neutrons left behind after the collapse and supernova event have a soup-like consistency. For some reason, scientists are fond of comparing the layers of these objects to food. In this particular case, the star's inner and outer layers are basically like a lasagna, and between these layers are tubes that they compare to penne. I swear I'm not making this up, and I'm sorry to all of you who are now suddenly craving pasta because of me. Getting back to the collision event from May of 2020, though, when the gamma ray burst was first detected by NASA's Neil Garrell Swift Observatory, scientists thought they were looking for a normal gamma ray burst resulting from the collision of two neutron stars. But the flash of light that Hubble recorded was far brighter than scientists originally thought it would be, leaving them scratching their heads. In fact, it's the brightest explosion of gamma rays we've ever recorded, at least in the infrared range. To put this in perspective, a typical kilonova should be about 1,000 times brighter than a nova, which is what happens when a white dwarf erupts. But this kilonova was 10,000 times brighter than a typical neutron star collision should be. Now, even an ordinary collision between neutron stars results in a flash of light that is visible from anywhere in the known universe. But this one was even more powerful than that. Initially, scientists thought that this brightness, roughly 80% brighter than a similar event witnessed in 2017, could have been explained by the objects being closer to us than originally thought. That's why they commissioned so many other observatories. They needed to confirm that their suspicions were correct, but they weren't. Hubble is designed to search for infrared emissions in space, especially those resulting from heavier elements like gold, uranium, and platinum. And it's pretty accurate when it comes to measuring distance. So it turns out that this particular event was six billion light years away. That means that this event took place six billion years ago. According to Ido Berger, an astronomer at the Center for Astronomy jointly run by Harvard University and the Smithsonian Institution, the infrared emission detected was far brighter than scientists ever expected. Despite how bright the flash of the explosion was, Berger and his associates still think this was caused by the collision of two neutron stars. But now they think that the results of that collision was the formation of a special type of neutron star called a magnetar. <laughs> Neutron stars are already pretty terrifying, and all of the phenomena that we see in them, the immense densities, rotation, and complicated structures, mess with physics in some surprising ways. For one, neutron stars have powerful magnetic fields. Now, under ordinary circumstances, you wouldn't have a magnetic field associated with a collection of neutrons. They're neutral, after all. But a few protons do survive in a neutron star, and because the neutron star is experiencing such immense density in this complex physics, the magnetic field is amplified exponentially. But how powerful does it get? Well, the Earth's magnetic field is measured at one Gauss, and the Sun's is around 100 Gauss, and an MRI machine is 10,000 Gauss. Humans currently can't make machines generating a field stronger than a few hundred thousand Gauss, because the immense stress on those machines causes them to break down. A neutron star's magnetic field is measured at a staggering trillion Gauss. So, what is a magnetar then? A magnetar is a neutron star with a magnetic field measuring in at one quadrillion Gauss. That's 1,000 trillion times stronger than Earth's. Now, that much power is hard to imagine for our puny human brains. 
But suffice it to say, these things devastate the space and any objects that happen to be unlucky enough to be around them. The magnetic field of a magnetar is so powerful that atoms get stretched to pencil-thin rods, and it disturbs normal molecular chemistry. Covalent bonds break down, and if you were to put a human within 1,000 kilometers or closer, not only would your normal bioelectricity stop functioning, but the molecules making up your body would just dissolve. In other words, it'd be like getting Thanos snapped out of existence. So, pretty scary, right? Yeah. But, fortunately for us, magnetars don't last very long. About 10,000 years by our current estimates. We know that magnetars exist because we see them throughout the galaxy. So scientists know what to look for when combing the skies with their telescopes. Hubble continued to watch the neutron star collision play out over the course of 55 days. And the resulting data showed that the kilonova's energy was fading over time. Scientists think that magnetars are typically formed from the cores of large stars, the same way a typical neutron star would form. But they also think that they can form when neutron stars collide with each other. And that's probably what we're looking at here. Now, the byproduct of such a collision isn't typically a magnetar. Scientists think that these type of collisions usually result in the formation of a small black hole, resulting in a gamma ray burst that only lasts a few seconds. Berger and his colleagues predict that in about a year, we'll detect the telltale radio waves of a magnetar left over from this event. But if those radio waves aren't present in a year, then Berger and his associates will have to rethink the cause for the brightness of this phenomenon. It's hard to imagine that this event could be anything other than the birth of a magnetar, but what if it isn't? So Berger and his people think that the kilonova was the result of the birth of a new magnetar. If those radio readings are detected one year from the event, then I guess that will prove their hypothesis right. But if not, what could it be? First of all, magnetars are not at all common in our galaxy. We know of about 30 total. Think about that and compare it to the trillions and trillions of stars we've cataloged. Now that doesn't mean that new magnetars aren't possible, but it does mean that discovering one now would be a bit unlikely to say the least. Neutron star collisions are also rare. We've only detected two so far, one in 2017, which we mentioned earlier, and one this year. Compare this to the two or three supernova which are seen every century and you get an idea for how much rarer this kind of event is. But even detecting two of these events would be far less likely than should be possible. We basically never expected to detect such an event in our lifetime, let alone two stretched mere years apart. Another problem is that we won't be able to detect the gravitational waves from this event. It's just too far away. If it had been closer to us, say about 300 to 600 million light years away, then we'd have a better chance of detecting those waves. As a side note, this event may have resulted in the production of one of those fast radio bursts we've been hearing about. Scientists currently think that FRBs could be caused by this type of collision. So if we do end up detecting one in 2021, then that data may finally answer the mystery of where those bursts are coming from. One hypothesis that is being explored is that we've actually witnessed this kilonova from an odd angle, making it appear brighter than normal. But this really wouldn't explain why this event was so much brighter than a kilonova should be. The other option is that this is a wholly new phenomenon, never before observed. For now, scientists like Berger and his co-authors are going to keep their telescopes trained on this area of space, waiting for more data to pour in. And you can bet that we'll be talking about it when that happens. If you enjoyed this video, drop me a like and tell me how scary you think magnetars are now. Are they more frightening than a black hole? And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss a Science Get episode. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.